this is the second video for section 4.2 and it is going to be talking about that library of functions. So we went over some of the graphs of basic functions. Uh, a constant graph, um, which isn't quite showing up on here, uh, a constant graph is just going to be a straight horizontal line. And in this case, I said the function was f equals 1, and so we have that straight horizontal line at 1. Again, in that case, that's a constant. Um, this would be x to the 0, technically, and you can see that's just a straight line. The slope um, is 0, and that's why we have that exponent of 0. The next one we're going to move on to is the linear function. Uh, we can start off with a simple function, which is just f of x equals x. In that case, we've got a diagonal line that you see here, and that is going through the origin, uh, because if you plug in 0, you get 0. Uh, and it has a slope of 1 out front, or you can think of it as being at a 45 degree angle. Rise over run would be 1 to 1. If we move up from that, we can look at a uh, constant slope. In that case, we've got m is a constant number. Again, we've got that diagonal line. And uh, in this case, we have the example 2x plus 1. So we're hitting that axis at 1. We've got a rise over run of 2 to 1. So we rise to run 1. Again, this is kind of a rectangular graph, so it doesn't quite look uh, as steep as it should. But in this case, it is a rise to run of uh, 2 to 1. So those are the ones you're probably most familiar with. Uh, moving up, we've got the square function. Uh, the square function is a parabola. And the parabola is that U shape. Again, if we just kind of go with the basic function of x squared, it is going to be going through the origin, just has that U shape. Uh, if you add a number to it, it will just shift up, or if it's a negative number, shift down on the axis. And um, we can also adjust it as far as um, being narrower with a coefficient out front of the x squared, such as 2 or 3 or 4, that'll make it narrower, or a fractional coefficient out front uh, would make it wider and rise less steeply. Uh, we talked about the cubic function. Again, it has, has this kind of S-shaped curve. Uh, it can get a little bit more extreme, like we saw in our graph and look something like that. Uh, the most basic shape though just kind of levels off and then keeps going. Uh, if we have a positive coefficient here in front of the x cubed, then uh, it is going to be increasing from left to right. If we have a negative exponent in front of the x cubed, it is going to be decreasing from left to right. Uh, same thing for the parabola. If we have a, a positive coefficient here, then we are going to uh, have a parabola facing up. If it's a negative coefficient, a parabola facing down. The reciprocal function, 1 over x, we didn't graph this one, but it is a good one to know. It shows up a lot when we're dealing with proportions. Uh, it takes this shape following um, both branches there of the graph, usually in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, if we have a positive coefficient again. Uh, again, you can adjust the steepness depending on what numbers are involved here. This is just the basic 1 over x. Square root function, we did talk about. Again, you always want to make sure that your domain here is uh, for the expression under the radical to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, it kind of follows that kind of arc curve that just kind of slowly increases. It kind of increases fast at first and then slows off, kind of tapers off there, but still increases. Uh, cube root opposite of the cubic function. Again, uh, the square root was the opposite of the square, so it had that parabolic shape just sideways. Same thing for a cube root. A cube root is going to look very similar just essentially if we flipped the cubic function sideways. If we kind of rotate it at 90 degrees, we get the cubic function. And finally, the absolute value function is helpful in certain applications. Um, if you look at the absolute fu value function, everything has to be positive. So essentially, it takes that y equals x function for the positive values, and then it flips it up for the negative values. And so that's our absolute value function, which is also helpful at times. This concludes the video on the library of functions. In the next video, we'll talk about using graphs of functions to solve systems of equations.